But this concept that keto dieting and low carb dieting and fasting can induce insulin resistance. I'm hearing people say that it's turned into this, you know, you need to take a break from keto dieting and you need to try carb cycling yeah. and, and cyclic keto dieting as a way to prevent insulin resistance from happening. So what's your response to that? Yeah, my response is BS. Um, to, to, be, <laughs> to, be, to put it very bluntly, um, yeah. I, I appreciate that people want to invoke insulin resistance at all. So there's a little part of me that's thrilled when any, when uh, anytime anyone mentions insulin resistance, because I like hearing people say it, um, because it means it's getting more attention. But in this case, it really is invoked uh, incorrectly, uh, where uh, in the true phenomenon that happens with fasting or a ketogenic diet is, is a, is a, uh, maybe the best way is, is a glucose sparing that's occurring in the body. And mm -hmm. In fact, even more accurately, that's, that's not accurate enough. This is the most accurate, is that the body loses the first phase of insulin secretion temporarily. Now, let me elaborate very briefly. When we eat a starchy, sugary meal, we have a, a biphase or a two-phase release of insulin. We have a very rapid, little, smaller bump of insulin. It comes down, and then we have a bigger bump. That first bump, and that bigger bump is what ultimately will settle the glucose levels back down to normal. That first bump is, is a function of the preformed insulin that is already in the beta cells. So the beta cells mm. of the pancreas that make insulin, they have produced some insulin and they just are holding it in store. So that the moment this glucose rushes through the blood, the beta cells already have some insulin ready to go. They release that preformed insulin and that will handle that will start to lower the glucose very rapidly to some degree, but not enough to get it all the way down. And then the next big longer phase of insulin secretion is when the beta cells have made new insulin. They've made it from scratch. There was none of this insulin already on the shelf ready to just be taken into the blood. Mm -hmm. It's that first phase that is lost with fasting in a ketogenic diet. We're actually doing some rodent studies on this to confirm in the ketogenic diet, but there's already evidence in humans to confirm this phenomenon in um, in, in, in fasting conditions. But what yeah. it is is that with uh, with with regular fasting and with the ketogenic diet, and even I say regular fasting, but this study actually only looked at something like a 16-hour fast. They were saying that even a 16-hour fast is enough to reduce or almost to totally blunt that first phase of insulin. The pancreas is so, it, it abhors holding on to insulin unless it needs it very, very soon. And so over 12 to 16 hours even, the pancreas is thinking, oh, okay, wait, there's no glucose coming in. We had all this insulin on hand. We're just going to break this insulin back down into its component parts because I don't want to hold on to this. I don't want a filling space. I don't want to cluttering the beta cells if, if we don't need it too soon. Right. And so that's what happens, that if someone's on a ketogenic diet or they're fasting and they take in a load of glucose, <clears throat> the glucose will go high and it will stay higher than it would normally if they were regular carb eaters or even in the person fasting for 16 hours. If they'd had a little bit of glucose only eight hours before the test, they would have actually paradoxically had the glucose come up and down a little faster because they've primed the beta cells to have that insulin on hand. The beta cells are just too efficient. They don't want to keep insulin on hand unless they need it pretty frequently. That's the truth of the matter. It is the loss of the first phase of insulin secretion. I say loss, but I wouldn't want anyone to think that's a dramatic statement. It's very yeah. acute. So you can be mm -hmm. a long-term adherent to a ketogenic diet. And if you know, you've or a regular fast or multi-day fasting or both, if you know you've got to go into the clinic, and do an oral glucose tolerance test, then prime the pump, start eating some carbs in the, in the, you know, the one or two days before you go in. The beta cells are there. They're ready to go. Your body is, in fact, exquisitely sensitive to insulin. There's no insulin resistance in the body whatsoever. If you were to take those people who are fasting or on a ketogenic diet and inject them with a bolus of insulin, their glucose levels would plummet very, very rapidly. And George Cahill, a famous starvation scientist, physiologist, published these findings decades mm -hmm. ago. These people are very sensitive to insulin. Ergo, they are not insulin resistant, but people have just mixed the loss of first phase insulin secretion with insulin resistance. Because in an insulin resistant person, they would drink that glucose from a glucose tolerance test and similarly, their glucose levels would go higher than normal and stay higher than normal for longer. 
but they're not the same thing. We're trying to equate um, these two different conditions just because they had one similar outcome with regards to glucose clearance. On one hand, an insulin, true insulin resistance, it's that even though the body is swimming in a sea of insulin, the insulin isn't working as well. On the other, mm -hmm. which some errantly refer to as physiological insulin resistance in the context of a low-carb diet. Again, that's purely, that's absolutely wrong. That's just mm -hmm. because the body has lost that preformed. It doesn't have that preformed, ready-to-go insulin on hand. It can get it back very, very quickly. Um, so there's no, there's no permanent concern here. And there, I don't think there's any reason then. Um, that shouldn't be used as justification for cyclical ketogenic diets or carb cycling. Not that I'm opposed to that that's fine and it right. might have a place but if the mm -hmm. reason for doing it is i want to keep my body insulin sensitive no that's absolutely false the body's exquisitely insulin sensitive 